All right. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Today is Friday, May 10th. <clears throat> Welcome to Recon Roleplay. As always, Denny Grimes, John McLeod here to, to hopefully help you guys move things forward with your businesses. And we love all the participation. Denny, let me ask you, what's important about May 10th? Well, let's see if you can get this one. This is National Clean Your Room Day. Now, who knows what that has to do with recon? Come I, on. I have no idea, but I can tell you, Denny, that when I was younger, I skipped this day every year. I know. I've seen you every I've, day. <laughs> I've seen your office. Anyway, you guys know that we train in bold. Back from the very beginning, we, the way we train for embedded commands is, did your mom ever say, clean your room, please? No, clean your room. Ta uh, talking about embedded commands and the downswing. And we'll even work on that and recon. How's that, John, for uh, May 10th? Love it. Love it. And it is a free-for-all Friday. Yes, really quick. I got a couple of minutes. <clears throat> we have Mondays with Monica. Monica Reynolds is coming up Monday. And for the next couple of Mondays for the this month of May. And then, thanks to Louise, we've got Anna Kruger coming up in June. And uh, she is awesome, you guys. She, she trains um, I, I, inside salespeople. She's a whiz at outbound calls. You wouldn't want to miss that. And it is Free For All Friday. And my last little announcement, you guys, is Mastery Level Role Plays today. Uh, so don't miss that. If you don't know how to get on, there's the QR code. And, John, I'm ready to roll, ready to take some notes. And who is going to be up first? Well, our, our first one stepping up to the plate today is Tanner in Nassau County, New York. And, Tanner, great job putting your location up there. So, guys, when you got somebody looking to go to Nassau County, you know who to send it to. Tanner, what are we working on today? So... John, I, I actually would like to role play with Don. You know, I door knock a lot, and I would like to be uh, kind of like the client and Don be the agent. Uh, so, Don, you know, you knocked on my door. I was interested in finding out the value of my house, but wasn't sure if I want to make the move. Uh, basically, I know you door knock, so I just wanted to find out how you take it when people really uh, ask you for the values of the homes. Okay, okay. so am, am I Whoa. following up, or is this an introductory door knock? Yeah, you knocked on my door and I was interested to find out what my values because you, you told me you do it for free. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> so this is this is a minute into a door knock. I just met you a minute ago at a door knock. Is that right? And you said, hey, tell me what the house is for sale. Tell me what the house is worth. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And you will come All back right. wherever it is, you know. Like... All right. All right, let's so, see the uh, next minute and a half, Don. Okay, so Tanner, I appreciate that. Um, as as you can see on this list I'm carrying around, here's a, a market analysis that was just done um, just two days ago for all of Scottsdale Ranch, <clears throat> every property that's for sale, pending, and sold. Now you have, standing here on your doorstep, looks like you've got about 24, 2,600 square foot, four bedroom. Is that right? You're, you're about that, yeah. Yeah, so you can look at, we can go through and look at all these um, right now. Um, obviously, the average dollar per square foot here is $350 a square foot. You see the average time on the market. What we could do is I can I can email you this, but to further explain it, all I got to do is sit down with you for maybe 20 minutes. I can do that later today, or I can come by tomorrow afternoon and explain this in detail. And that way you'll have a an analysis of your home versus me just wing something here on the doorstep. Would that be okay? Yeah, Don, actually, I meant that 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 would be the time when you came back. That, that That's what I wanted to, you know, uh, make, make it actually. Okay, so, all right, I was confused. So we are back. I'm meeting with you in person now? Yeah. Okay, John, rewind the clock, please. Done. Sorry okay. For so, and your, your, wife, <clears throat> your wife is with you, right, Tanner? Yeah, that's correct. Great. So... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. So again, uh, Mrs. Seller, I, I met with Tanner yesterday in the door, on the doorstep. He was nice enough to invite me and thanks for all that. I've already gone through your home. So <clears throat> after looking at all these, these sold properties and the current competition, Tanner, with 2,600 square feet, what do you think your property is worth? I mean, you saw, Don, we did a lot of upgrades, you know, pretty much, you know, we updated. Time, John, I think we're at a minute and a half, aren't we? He needed to reboot. So he's got another another minute. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. So what do you think? You, yes, you've done a you've done a lot of upgrades, Tanner. Based on your competition, 
what have you heard? What have you seen? What do you think your property is worth here in Scottsdale Ranch? I, I, I would say in the seven, like seven, in the upper sevens. Upper sevens? Looks like the market is agreeing with you. So what is your time frame for making a move, Tanner? Well, that's the thing. We're not we're not 100% sure if we want to do it now or a little later because, you know, the interest rates are a little bit. I'm, I'm paying like 3.8% right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, right now it's still high. So that's the confusion uh, a little bit. Got it. I, I appreciate that. So what's important about determining whether you're going to move or not? This is too big, though. We really want something smaller. That, that, that's that's the main idea. And I, okay. I, I don't like to spend no more money in the house. So. Great. And and when do you plan on moving to that downsize? If we find something that fits us, you know, we're not in a rush. But if everything falls in its place, we could do it. Time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I was going to ask, so I'm curious, why am I here now? So, great question. I want to start out with this. Tanner, what did you learn from the way Don handled this? I mean, the, the, the way, you know, he brought it back is still like, he did not give me exactly a number that, and it would make me, you know, say the number, and then it was like, okay, you know, the market, you know, looks like it would, you know, uh, it, would, it would agree with that. Let, let's that, get a little more basic on it, Tanner. Um, the model that Don goes through is exactly the same, does not matter the conversation. So he went right in, CMA right into the conversation model, right? So yes, the question might come up, why am I here? Even deeper than that, if you found that house today, are you ready to execute on it? And the answer is no, which is would move the, the conversation forward. Um, I'm curious... If you're okay with me asking a question, Tanner, and if you're not, that's okay. Just let me know. Uh, I'm curious where your uh, mind is that you have a roadblock about the conversation after you have the CMA. <clears throat> so I, I do a lot of door knocks and I do get a lot of people asking for the values of their home. And I noticed that, you know, I get only like 10% conversion of all of that. So I'm like, maybe uh, there was something, maybe I should be more aggressive or more straight forward with some of the stuff. That's the reason I asked Don. Okay, awesome. Denny? Hey, I, you guys made me go back to my school days when they were reading out loud and I was trying to find them on the page and I could never catch up with them. That's exactly how I felt on that role play. Uh, and I, however, Don, you said one thing I thought was awesome. I wrote it down and I want to share with everybody. When you're talking about numbers, 700 is what he wanted. You showed him the comp. Mm, I almost said the bad word. You showed him the past sales and the actives. And you said, look like it looks like the market is green with you, which is a great line. Now, you didn't get into specifics. It looks like the markets are green with you. And you went right on with another part of your conversation. I love that. John. All right. The only thing, Denny, the thing that Don said that I was surprised you didn't point out because I, I know it's a pet peeve, is dollar per square foot. <clears throat> it's, a, uh, uh, it's a term guys use it sparingly because when appraisers use price per square foot, they have taken into account everything in the house. And when a seller looks at price per square foot, they don't consider whether or not their home has been upgraded, updated, Anything's been done to it all. They just see a bottom line number. So the dollar per square foot is not a good starting point. It's where you will end up, but it's not a good starting point unless you've got 97 years experience like Denny and Don combined do. <clears throat> all right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Dan. Hello. What are we doing? I don't know, Joe. What do you what do you want to do? Whatever you want, man. It's free for all Friday. Better be prepared. Let's go. Garrett, I want you at the table uh, with Joe. He is an expired. Go. Okay, Joe. Now that we got a chance to to look over everything, are you ready to put me to work? You know, uh, sorry, Garrett, not yet. Uh, We've got a couple more agents to interview. Makes sense. Other than interviewing other agents, is there anything else that's holding you back from uh, uh, hiring me? Well, you know, um, you, you said that a lot of the homes you're selling are in other areas and uh, have you, we're, we're a little worried about hiring an agent that hasn't sold in our neighborhood yet. Okay. What's, what's more important. What's, what's important to you about that? 
Well, you know, uh, the the woman around the corner, she she lives here. She knows this neighborhood. You know, her mm-hmm. kids went to school here, so I think she's mm-hmm. more qualified. Okay, because she she knows the area and she sold homes in the area, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, Joe, when it comes to bringing buyers, do you think the buyers are coming from neighbors in your uh, neighbors in your community or usually outside your community? Uh, I I don't know. I guess probably from outside. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's where we focus on. Where your agent has sold a few houses in your neighborhood, we uh, have a larger area. We service uh, we service uh, a lot more houses. So when it comes down to criteria, you know, you're looking for an agent, what, what are, what is that criteria? Well, we want someone who's going to get us the most for this house because uh, we, we need it. Okay. Anything else? Um, you know, no, could, they need to be able to tell us about the neighborhood and tell buyers about the neighborhood so that we know they'll get the top dollar. Fantastic. Anything else? That's it. Awesome. And if we feel confident we can do that, are you ready to put us to work? Yeah, if you can do that. Sounds good. Here's the paperwork. Let's get it done. Inside right in a minute 55. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Denny, go ahead. Really fast. Good isolation, Garrett. Uh, you, you did a nice job isolating. Uh, and she, he went into, I'm going to introduce some more people and you guys hear me kind of like john talking about price per square foot you had better know that before you get to the end of your presentation so if you're surprised shame on you you should know that they're going to interview that then you would know how to proceed and she and he, he wanted someone who would have a knowledge of the neighborhood he went down a good path was okay where are the buyers coming from i think you could have probably made that case a little bit better uh and then he finally you ask him enough questions where he finally said he wants to net the most and really What's more important, the net or getting somebody who memorizes and and can spell every street in the neighborhood? So what does Mm -hmm. he mean by know the neighborhood? So I I can't fault you, Garrett. I think your logic was solid. John. So, Garrett, I I love how you handled that. The only thing I would add in, guys, if you're wondering how to create knowledge of the neighborhood before this objection comes up, when you're interviewing the seller, and notice I say, when you are interviewing the seller, not when they're interviewing you, ask them questions. What caused you to move here? Get them to tell you everything they like about the neighborhood beforehand. Because if they ask you the question, you already have all the answers as to why people are going to move there. However, you will you most likely going to preemptively take that question off the table. Make sense? All right, Joe, you're up. <clears throat> For sale by owner, please. That's Rudis. You guys are at the table. At the table is two minutes. Rudy. And awesome. go. All right, Rudis. So after everything we've talked about, are you ready to put me to work today? Well, yeah, like I, like I told you over the phone, you know, I appreciate that you came over to see the house. I mean, I'm very open mind to pay you a 2% if you bring me a buyer. And after you just saw the property, I think if you have the buyer, I'll be more than happy to pay you that that. that that commission i appreciate so it sounds like you're planning on continuing to sell this on your own yeah i mean i left it up you know i listed about two weeks ago so i truly believe i can get the job done yeah i think you can too and um you know after what we've talked about here uh if i could show you how to make more money versus doing it on your own would that be a reason to hire an agent i mean how would you do that well uh there are four different points in a transaction where um, where uh, you can run into trouble. Uh, and first one is generating an offer. Have you had any offers yet? Not yet. Okay. And how long are you prepared to continue down this road before you might consider hiring an agent to get offers for you? Well, I, you know, I'm not quite sure, but it could be a week or two weeks. Okay. Now, if I could fast forward that for you right now, would you be ready to hire me? Well, uh, with the commission part, like I said, I, you know, um, I was willing to pay 2%. How would you, how would you handle that? Cause I, you know, okay. I want to make the most amount. Other than the commission, is there any other reason why you wouldn't hire me then? No, it's the commission at the end of the day. 
Okay. Well, you're already paying 2% and usually buyers, I'm sorry, uh, agents are able to sell houses for five to 7% more than uh, buyers, I'm sorry, unassisted sellers can on their own. If you're already paying two and I can net you five to 7% Time. more. Time. All right. Yes, take the listing. Go ahead, Denny. Yeah, here we go. Um, I'm going to start it. He's paying you two percent. Okay, he wants to keep the listing side. Uh, Rudis, how much are you? How much are you attempting to save by selling it yourself? Well, I was hoping to save, you know, an extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Well, what? Give me a percentage. What is the percentage? Three percent extra. So you're one of the. All right, so you're attempting to save three percent, right? Now, then you brought up you brought up some four four pain points, right? However, ra rather than try to sell yourself to them, walk him through pain. All right, so you've had it on the market now for like three weeks, right, Rudis? Correct. Haven't had an offer. Not yet. All right, so what is the market telling you? I don't know. I just hope, you know, I get the right buyer. Maybe it takes time. So you're actually, you know, you're driving a car with a blindfold. You know that. So, so when an offer comes in, how do you know if it's a good offer? That's a good question. I, I actually didn't think about that. Here's another question. And if it, if it offers not coming in, that means you're going to have to reposition. How much are you going to reposition? How much are you going to lower it? Let me ask you, because you don't do this every day. Is it possible for somebody in your position to lower it maybe one or 2% more than you need to? It could be. So that 3% you're attempting to save is now 1%. And Joe, I've only hit the first point. What about the negotiation? What about the appraisal? Blah, blah, blah. Walk him through the pain instead of just mentioning that and then trying to get the listing. Does that make sense, John? Yeah, love it. And the, the only thing I wrote down, Joe, for you, you got to it finally towards the end was when he said, I've been doing this for two to three weeks now. That's your point to say, when will you seek professional help? When are you going to go to the shrink? All right. That's when you can start introducing that that concept in there. And then you go right down the road that uh, right down the path that Denny took you down. John, how about using that statement? Say, well, listen, if you're if you're if you're sick and you're trying to cure yourself from your grandmother's remedies and you're two after two weeks, you think you might go to a doctor? You would think so. <laughs> awesome. All right, Rudis, you're up. All right. So my, my boy, Augustine, his first timer is coming on board. He's going to do expire. Come on, let's go. Let's go. No, I'm serious. Come on. Brutus is cracking a whip. Love it. Right, he's right there. He's doing ex expired expire call. Expired call. You got 90 yeah, seconds and you were calling Jenica. Yes, yeah, just one second. Brutus, if you're charging admission for that room that we want to cut, okay? <laughs> Do it. Awesome. All right. 90 seconds. Make the call. Go. Ring, ring. Hello? Hi, how you doing? My name is Augustine with Keller Williams. I just yeah. noticed your property recently came off the market. Um, I'm just wondering if you're still interested in possibly selling. Oh uh, no, I think we're gonna we're gonna wait until until next year. Got it. I got it. I totally understand. But can you can you just tell me what happened? I mean, did you get any offers while the property was on the market? Uh, we did get an offer, but it was a lot lower than what we had hoped for. Got it. Got it. Okay. How much lower was it than you anticipated? uh about like fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars got it got it and how did you choose your last agent they were a referral a referral from family from a, a co-worker from a co-worker got it okay now if you were able to get something uh, a price similar to what you or close to what you're looking for would you be interested in possibly putting back on the market sooner uh possibly but how would you do that um, you know, I just basically, I just seen whatever I see on the computer right now and information is what I'm seeing. I possibly could get you closer to what you're looking for based on what you're telling me. Um, is there any way I could meet with you in the next uh, couple of days to show you what I can do to get you the price you're looking for? I don't know. I guess I just, yeah, if the other agent wasn't able to get me my price, I'm just not sure how, how you would be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, he time. But love it. Great job. Great, Great job. job for stepping up and getting uncomfortable. Got Denny, it. you want to start or you want me to start? I'll go ahead, John. I'll, I'll let you go first. I'll end it. All right. Awesome. 
careful of filler words. Oh, don't leave. Stay sitting down. <laughs> nice try. Um, <clears throat> you used, uh, I get it, I get it, I get it, and I totally understand a lot. It just comes with practice. When you pull the filler words out, now you have more time to dig into the questions, okay? Um, when she said the offers were 50K below, you went into, how, do you, how did you choose the agent? You took her off the highway. That, that statement was $50,000 below. The first thing I thought of is, is well, how did that 50K affect your plans? Got it. Okay. All right. Denny. All right. Good job. Uh, way to play. Let's see here. Um, yeah. Uh, great feedback, John. Let me, I hear something that came to my mind. And I bring this up a lot. No one uses it. I think it's very valid that during that conversation that uh, expired, well, were you aware that, you know, 18, I use the word 18, 12 homes sold in the last 45 days inside our zip code? Are you at all curious why yours did? Or let me ask you this. If you were fishing in a lake and everyone was catching fish but you, would you not be asking some questions? So the market is, the market is saying we want to live there. However, why don't we evaluate to find out if maybe the problem is the bait? Last point is, Getting the fifty thousand, getting the fifty thousand. Listen, in Florida, we're having we're having a flood of inventory coming in. We're seeing people really on the, on the markets changing, going the other way, and most likely it didn't sell because of, of price. Don't be talking about the net uh, anymore as much. Talk about why they want to move. Well, if I can get you moved, get your conversation to that because most likely they're not positioned right. John, love it. And when you ask that question about the fifty k you'll likely find the 50K really didn't affect their plans all that much. They were just stuck on a number, not on the motivation behind the sale. Jenica, you're up. What are we doing? Wait, I'm going to door knock uh, around in new listings. Awesome. Two we took go go knock on Matt's door. You got okay. Matt Cannon. All right. Okay. Go. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. Hi, my name is Jenica. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. And I was coming by today. We just listed two townhomes in your community. So I was hoping to talk to neighbors, invite you to our open house that's happening tomorrow from two to four, and then find out um, who do you know that's thinking of moving to the neighborhood? Uh, I'm sorry, which which property is this? Oh, this is uh, 3273 and 3255 Via Grande. So they're still in your in your community here. Okay. Well, well, what time's the open house? It's from two to four tomorrow. Two to four tomorrow. You know what? Saturday is a busy day for us. We're, uh, we, we're probably not going to have time to come by. Okay. No problem. And uh, who do you know that might be looking to move to the neighborhood? Like neighbors or friends, people from work? Sorry, not neighbors. Obviously. Uh, I don't really know anybody right now. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for thinking about that. And um, I was going to ask you, we do a monthly neighborhood newsletter. Would it be helpful for you to receive that just to give you ideas on what's going on with past sales in the neighborhood or what your neighbors are selling for and just keep you apprised of the market? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if we need it. I think we're okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you hear anybody, please send them to the open house. Okay. Thank you. Great job, minute 25. Awesome. Denny, you want to go first? I'll go really fast. I'll let you uh, get the line share. Uh, slow down on your first 22 seconds. You you were kind of like, you ran into two questions in one. Like, hey, I've got an open house and who do you know that wants to live here? Break that up a little bit. I think it's also a little handy if you're going to door knock, have, have a little bit of a flyer. That's going to be your open house. Hey, listen, and hand it to them. Now you're going to, these that person's going to pause for a moment and look. Because they don't have addresses memorized. They mm -hmm. might know, hey, this is the house with the green shutters. And, and, and secondly, hey, look, you know, this is a great area. Look, I'm going to say it again. 12 homes have sold here in the last 90 days. Who do you know that would like to maybe take advantage of the market right now? Just slow it down. It kind of ran together and he was then kind of backpedaling. What was that address again? John. Thank you. Wrote down the exact same thing, Denny. One question at a time. You sandwich two questions at the beginning and three questions at the end. By separating them, you'll give the person an opportunity to think about one at a time as opposed to deflecting. Uh, <clears throat> when he said he, that, that, you know, uh, tomorrow's a bad time, we're kind of busy on Saturdays. The first thing that went to my mind was there's an open door. So, you know what, Matt, when can we bring you by for a private viewing? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, maybe right. in the morning. Perfect. He he when he said if he wasn't interested, he would have said not interested. Mm-hmm. He opened the door just a crack. We said, Well, that time's not good for me. Oh, well, what time is? All right. Awesome. Thank you. Matt Cannon, you are up. Your target's Frank. Hey, Frank. Welcome to Frankie Friday. Perfect. Hey, I'll do, I'll do a uh, I'll do it for sell by owner call. Oh, All right, boy. Fizzball call. 90 seconds. Hey, Frank. Go. go. Yeah, is this... Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this owner of 123 Main Street? Yeah. Hi, this is Matt Cannon with Keller Williams Realty. I, I, I'm, hey, Frank, are you, are, you, are you actually talking? I can't hear you. Uh, talk, okay. Frank. I, I think I got you. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, this is Matt Cannon with Keller Williams Realty. Hey, listen, I was just curious. Uh, how long is your home going to be on the market before you decide to list with a really good agent to get that home sold? Well, you know, uh, I know I can get it sold, so uh, it's just a matter of time. Got it. Just a matter of time. What time? What kind of time are we talking about, Frank? Uh, maybe a month. Maybe a month. I got you. You know what, Frank? I'm just curious. What's what's got you putting your home on the market in the first place? Uh, it's just something to do. <laughs> something to do. I got you, Frank. No, I love sitting around selling houses. Listen, are you just thinking about moving somewhere else, or what's your overall strategy for this for this home? Uh, when it sells, then I'll figure out where I'm going to go. You know, I got people I can go visit for a couple months. And... Okay. Perfect. You know, Frank, a lot of times when people use me to sell their homes, it's typically because there's something about their home that they're no longer happy with. Maybe it's the location, maybe it's the layout. Which one of these is true for you? None. Old Stonewall Frank has come to the table today. I, I'm going to hang on a minute. Hey, Matt, <laughs> it's not going to work. Matt is like, when you talk to Frank, it's trying to like, trying to nail jello to a tree. <laughs> Well, Frank, let me ask you this. Can we can we at least agree that when you sell your home, you want to make the most money for it? Am I right? Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, okay. Listen, Frank, and that's why people typically choose to, you know, get me to help them sell their home. Why don't we do this? Why don't we come by? Let me take a look at it. What's your schedule like? Are you available later on today or maybe tomorrow? No, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm You're busy. Working. That's enough. I got you. <laughs> take, the, take the bamboo out of your nails, Matt. Here's the only thing I'm going to say. That's Frank. No one can land Frank. He's like the old fish in the pond. No one's going to land him. Is if you're going to, the only thing I'd say, do you sense yourself repeating everything? Yes. So I'm going to raise some money. Sales are slow here. It's going to be 25 cents. Next role play. Every time you repeat that, it'll be 25 cents in a coffee can. Okay. John. So <clears throat> when Frank said he was bored and he's selling his house, first thought that came to mind, says, you know what? What are you going to do with your time after the house sells? That might have given you an insight as to what he's going to be doing. <clears throat> no one's cracked Frank. It's been a year. Uh, true. All right. So how many players do we got this week? Carlos, how many? Y'all, that is a great question. I'm not sure because I don't have the doc. <laughs> all right well i'm sure that we're, we always have around 40 or 45 so uh we had a, a monica so let's say 50 and so frank what day of the month were you born not year that would be 1855 that'd be close to my year so what day of the month were you born date the fifth fifth who's number five carlos he's oh, you muted again you don't he doesn't have a list yeah, so I mean, five could be anybody. All right. Well, I'm gonna. Who has not won it yet? Who has not won it? That's participated. Frank, you haven't I, won it. I think I'm number five. Frank is number five. All right. All right, Frank. Uh, here's my email. If and here's here. I'm gonna have another drawing. We're putting together some flyers. Don't forget our our um, celebrity role play, our celebrity recon. And um, if you guys email me, Coach Danny Grimes at Gmail, it's right up there, Coach Danny Grimes at, G- at Gmail. Whoops, you know what it is. 
a testimony, how recon has helped you in a situation, how you have learned, whatever. We're putting together a little flyer. We're going to promote it. And I'll put you guys in a special drawing for a 30-minute coaching call. So Frank and Don, either one of you have one. So you guys send me an email. We'll get you on the phone. And I'm going to just sprinkle some sugar on you, Frank. People will never recognize you. <laughs> so, John, are you gone? All right. Well, thanks for being here. Have a great Friday. Clean your room. Love you, man, Knuckle Bump. We'll see you at the one o'clock master call. Bye-bye.